Kia ora. Th in this video, I would like to cover my one year experience with the Nikon Z5, my first full frame mirrorless camera. I ordered my copy of this camera at Photo Warehouse for 25 New Zealand dollars with a 24 to 50 kit lens. And I have also purchased a Pentax K mount adapter as well as the 28 millimeter F 2.8 and the 40 millimeter F 2 prime lens. Normally I will say what the specs of this camera is but this time I am just gonna show the specs right here on this video so feel free to pause the video to read all the specs. As this is my first full frame camera by Nikon, I will struggle to point out all the problems I have experienced because this has been a really good camera. As I have been shooting most of my photographic career with the Olympus slash OM system Micro Four Thirds camera gear, I really like a fresh perspective with the full frame camera. The image quality is stunning, though I feel like it can be a little contrasty or saturated compared to a Panasonic or an OM system camera. The dynamic range blows my expectations and I feel like I do not need to worry about overexposing or underexposing the images, especially in low light or very bright situations. When adapting my Pentax lenses to the Z5, I can finally experience the lenses in all their glory without thinking about the crop factor as I normally do with Micro Four Thirds cameras. The electronic viewfinder is a whole lot better in terms of resolution and readout speed than my current Micro Four Thirds cameras. The sound of the shutter after taking a picture makes me feel like this is a serious tool for serious work in serious situations. The battery, which is a ENEL15C, lasts very long and despite carrying a spare one, I hardly need to use it. And the video, oh my god, it is incredible, even in full HD. It looks very crisp. And did I forget to mention the bokeh? With the right lens, God, the shallow depth of field is chef's kiss worthy.
Now that I have finished covering my pros of this camera, what can I say about the cons? Or shall I say, room for improvements? Shooting with a professional level camera does require higher quality memory cards, so I have invested in two 128GB memory cards by SanDisk. Not a huge con as you can get what you pay for, but using afford affordable memory cards or lower gigabytes will lead to fewer photos and videos. With a larger sensor means more dust can get into the sensor easily. While I was driving back from the west coast earlier this year, I took my Nikon with the Pentax 100-300mm lens to capture some landscapes. As I was changing my lens to the Nikon kit lens, a rain droplet landed on the sensor. Luckily I did have some cleaning gear and I was able to clean it, but it is something you do have to keep in mind when you move to full frame. While I would love to talk about the 14-bit RAW photos, I unfortunately cannot shoot at 14-bit RAW because my computer does not support 14-bit RAW photographs. When shooting manual focus, I really like that I can set my focus peaking, so the outlines on what is in focus. However, during a maternity shoot I had earlier this year, I did miss focus by a fraction for one particular photo. This could be a genuine user error, and I'm still understanding the Nikon shooting experience, but it is something that slightly triggers me, and I do want to try and fix that up. When I went out to Lake Ellesmere with another photographer for some astrophotography, I went through the entire menu and I could not find where to disable the green autofocus light or the orange timer light. I really like the electronic viewfinder, but at this stage I have not found how I can set it to switch between LCD or EVF with a push of a button. When I try to shoot low angles or waist level shots, it immediately switches to the EVF and I can no longer see what is on my LCD screen. This is a little irritating, especially if I want to do creative portraits on a low angle or even street photography. In some low light situations, I have struggled to get a subject in focus when I tap to the screen to focus on a subject. Again, I can use the green autofocus light, but no one likes to have an LED light pointing directly at their face. In terms of the ergonomics, it is a big camera to what I am used to. I would say I have quite small hands because my fingers don't wrap around the entire grip. The playback and delete button are on the top left of the camera, but my muscles are very used to having my playback and delete buttons on the bottom right corner, much like most of my Olympus OM system cameras or even the Panasonic Lumix LX100 Mark II. When reviewing photos, I have grown accustomed to using one dial for zooming into the photo and the other to scroll from one photo to another. So far, I have not figured out how to set this camera to do the exact same thing. 
every time I tried to use a dial, it would set me back into photo mode and to start taking photos instead of reviewing my photos or zooming in. Basically, if I were to review my photos, I have to resort to the little D-pad by scrolling left or right, and it just doesn't feel as efficient as it does with the dials. At the end of the day, I absolutely love shooting this full frame camera but does bring me towards a crossroad. Do I dare move out of Micro Four Thirds and start moving into full frame? I am really interested in investing in the Nikon Z series cameras and lenses. I have already been looking into the 85mm f1.8 S for my portrait work and the 24 to 120mm f4 S uh, series lens for my landscape and travel photography. The Z6 Mark II or the Z6 Mark III, whenever that camera comes out, would be a great action and sports camera. And the new ZF is a great uh, icebreaker for event photography. A lot of people love looking at a retro style camera and the ZF is a fantastic camera to fill in that niche. Either way, I am really glad to finally get my hands on the Nikon Z5 and I look forward to using this camera whenever and wherever in the future of my photographic journey. Alright, thank you all for checking out this review of the Nikon Z5. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave a like, comment and subscribe to this video. And also feel free to check out some of my prints on darkroom.com. Uh, links will be in the description below. As well as that, you're more than welcome to check out my website at www.patrickrose.co.nz. Stay safe out there and happy shooting.